Welcome, my name is Steve Schilling and I'm here to show you how to create public routes to your pods using OpenShift. In this session I'll talk about what a route is in OpenShift, the types of route that you might have, and in particular in this session we're looking at how a routing proxy works and how you actually get your external traffic into your pod. We'll look at how to create a route on the command line and then how to delete the routes uh, when you're finished with them. In OpenShift, the reason for a route is that you want to be able to access your pods from external resources. So for example, if you are hosting a web API uh, or uh, a web UI, some form of interface that your external customers need to come to, you might want to provide a route to that particular service or pod within inside OpenShift to access um, the necessary application. Uh, or it might be that you need a database server and you've decided that within your organization you're going to containerize your database server. In OpenShift you can create two types of route. The most common one and the one that we're going to look at in this session will be the HTTP or HTTPS type route whereby we want to have a container that will proxy the information into your application such as the web services API or UI. For things like databases, message queues and file transfer, you'll probably need a more complex TCP or UDP sockets. These are more involved than the HTTP and HTTPS services. All pods are hidden by default behind the proxies and the OpenShift services allow us to scale our pods and the service itself is very much like uh, a proxy, like a load balancer in front of the service. So what we want to be able to do is to provide something externalized from the internal services because OpenShift's internal service allows other pods and other services within inside the container to be able to access them. You can apply uh, a route, in this case the external routes, to either your uh, deployment configuration or to a service itself. Uh, we'd recommend normally having a service in front because you want that scalability in the enterprise. In this session we're actually looking at the routing proxy. This allows us to use a DNS name to access our pod with inside OpenShift. So let's take a typical OpenShift application. We've got some persistent storage which might be there to store some form of session information that we need temporarily. And then we've got our pod which is the container that we're using to work with our web-based service. In our case here, we're looking at our pod running on port 80, so it's a simple, straightforward web application using HTTP. To make our service scalable, we wrap a service around that, and we've named the service Nginx to go with the name of our pod that's being launched. That service provides the same port and information to any other service, whether it's internal or external, on our OpenShift service. For us to enable our service to be externally available, we need to create a route in OpenShift. That route is associated with the service name, and we give it a DNS name so that our proxy is able to locate the service within inside OpenShift. If you've ever used Kubernetes, the equivalent to this would be an ingress type. When we create a route in OpenShift, effectively our DNS name and our service is then associated to a proxy within inside the OpenShift cluster itself. The OpenShift cluster has a lookup table identifying which DNS name should be associated and routed to which service within OpenShift itself. You'll notice that our route to our service has a very similar name to that of our cluster server. So we've called our service my nginx.cluster.dns.name and our cluster server, the master in particular, would also have cluster.dns.name. This will allow the server to understand and route the information coming in to our service to the correct location. On our DNS server, we would create a CNAME that would take our root, my nginx.cluster.dns.name, the DNS name part of that root, and create a canonical name to cluster.dns.name. If a company allows it, then you may decide to create a wildcard star.cluster.dns.name so that you don't have to keep updating your DNS server every time you create a new route within inside OpenShift. With everything set up in OpenShift and on our DNS servers, your external customers and the clients can point their web browser 
at your service by simply typing in the DNS name to reach the service itself. They will hit the cluster server. The master itself in the cluster server will then look into the proxy. The proxy will look up in its table to find out where that DNS name points to and locate the service and pass the request on to your pods. Now let's take a quick look at the demonstration as to how this all runs. First we check our pods, we see what we're running. We've got an Nginx pod currently running in our system. We then look at our services to see what service we currently have exposed and we can see our Nginx service which is listening on port 80. Let's expose this service called Nginx without any other options. We're just going to expose this and let the DNS name take it from the server itself. We can see our service has now been exposed. So we can get the route, as we said previously. Typing without any other options would list all routes that we have. But we can now see our host name. So let's copy that host name. And we'll do a curl from the command line. So we can see without changing web browser that we've got our web page from our Nginx pod through our external service. If we paste that into the web browser, we'd have seen the same thing. So we'll get the root again. We'll delete the root. So we can see it's deleted. And we'll create a new root. expose the Nginx service but this time we will name the service so rather than it being Nginx-myweb we'll call it Steve and then we'll take the DNS name from the server that we know since we know this is exposed to the outside world. When we take a look at the root we should see that it's now named it according to what we were after so let's grab that and we can do the same thing again, we can curl and see the fact that we've got our Nginx service again. And again, there we go, we can see the welcome page from the Nginx server. Let's get the roots again and we'll just clear up our environment. So we'll delete the Nginx route. 